There's a wide variety of weapons and weapon types in the Outer Worlds, but the most sought after, the most mysterious and interesting are without a doubt the science weapons. Each of these has a mysterious and interesting backstory as to how it came to be, and it's also kind of obscure. Unlike many of the other weapons in this game, these are unique. There's one iteration of each science weapon in this game, and then that's it. And of course, as a result of that, these will oftentimes be found in unique or different locations, or even alternatively, actually just have a very cool or interesting effect to go along with them. Well, either way, in this video, what I'm going to be doing is telling you what each of these science weapons do, some of the brief lore behind it, and also where you could actually find them. Naturally, this is going to be spoilers for the Outer Worlds. Basically, the way the science weapons in this game works are there's only five of them, one for each of the major weapon categories, and something pretty interesting and definitely worth noting around these, even though they are kind of obscure or secretive in their locations, they're also kind of not. In the Outer Worlds, after you find one science weapon, or just walk up to the captain's terminal and start reading some of the logs, you actually get a quest that will lead you to basically every science weapon in this game. To progress this quest, sometimes you're going to have to buy information or actually progress other quests along the way, and that is definitely one avenue to find pretty much all of these. It kind of takes away the secrecy of them, but alternatively, you could just technically go to all of these locations, quest or not, and I will be showing you that route also. So a great starting point, and what is likely the easiest easiest science weapon to find in this game is the Mandibular Rearranger, the one-handed melee science weapon. In effect, to actually get this one, you're going to have to head over to Scylla. If you are following the quest to find all the science weapons, you'll have to buy some research first to find out that it is here. But alternatively, you also can just literally fly to Scylla the second you get your ship. On the corner of this map, there's going to be a little town area, and in this house specifically, you can find the Mandibular Rearranger just sitting in a safe. It's not locked or anything, so you can just loot the safe and then the weapon will be yours. And you could do this really early on, the second you get your ship up and running. The weapon itself is actually a pretty interesting one. While attacking humanoid enemies, it's actually going to rearrange their face, giving you a wide variety of very interesting looks. It could be larger, smaller, defigured, some combination of each of those, and with each subsequent hit, it will rearrange it yet again. So whether that looks funny and cool, the actual effect of the benefit of using this is it applies frost damage to enemies. So as you hit them, they will be slowed, and if you hit them enough times, they'll actually be frozen. And although cryo damage is fairly common in video games, in the Outer Worlds, it seems like it's actually unique to this weapon. That's the special ability per se. Overall, it's a pretty useful one. If you're going for a melee build, or even just at a hard one versus one against an enemy, it's very handy to be able to just freeze them and finish them off, or even switch to a different weapon, as the stun can be pretty long. As far as the lore of this one, it's actually the most bare bones of all of the science weapons. If you're following the quest, after reading the terminal entry on Captain Hawthorne's terminal, you'll find that he was tracking some black market leads. From there, you can go to Gladys on Groundbreaker, where you could actually purchase the archive cartridge, and this will lead you to Scylla. The weapon itself is just described as being created by a mysterious scientist, and there's really no backstory here, which is quite a contrast. Many of these weapons actually do have pretty interesting backstories. Although after that, the other extremely easy science weapon to get is the Shrink Ray. Prior to the launch of the game, the Shrink Ray has without a doubt been shown the most often, and in game, in order to get it, all you have to do is actually fly over to Phineas's ship, which you can do pretty much right away, and if you run up, it's literally just sitting there on a table. You can pick it up, Phineas will tell you this. Aha! I see you found my portable molecular compression device, better known as a shrink ray. Find the target, point, shoot. Your target will shrink down into a manageable size, whereupon you may commence beating them to a pulp. Feel free to try it on a Marauder sometime. So a bit of additional backstory around the weapon, but otherwise it's pretty much yours. I would argue the Shrink Ray, to me at least, felt like the least useful of all of the science weapons. I'd actually say every one after these first two in the video is quite powerful. In game, as you've probably seen from some of the trailers, what it's going to do is as you are shooting at an enemy, it will shrink them. This has to be a consistent beam though, as soon as you stop shooting the enemy, almost immediately they will grow back up to size, even to the point where it's difficult to shrink somebody down then switch to another weapon. While they are shrunken, they're actually going to have a really high-pitched voice, which is funny. I'm 
but enemies will also have reduced damage and armor while in this shrunken form. The thing about the shrink ray that makes it kind of difficult to use is it's very reliant on your companions. Obviously it does passive damage over time, but not much as you can see in the background, especially if you're fighting some of the creatures in this game, it can actually be kind of dangerous to use the shrink ray. So though funny and interesting to use, the only real viable way to utilize this one to its full potential is to actually have your companions focus fire one enemy as you're holding them shrunk down, which can be kind of hard to do sometimes. As far as the lore of this one, you're also put onto it by Captain Hawthorne's logs, in that he's basically going to describe how one day while interacting with Phineas, he just saw it there. He begged Phineas to use it, but he wasn't allowed. And Phineas described how he wanted to create something pretty incredible, actually pushing human technology forward, similar to how other scientists had done, so he created the shrink ray. It's numbered 001, seeming to implicate he hoped to create future iterations of it, or just multiple of them in the future. Next up, we do have the gloop gun. This one's pretty cool and pretty powerful. This should be one that you find naturally as you're doing the main quest of the Outer Worlds. You're going to meet a character named Sanjar, and one of the quests you have to do for Sanjar will actually involve you going to the UDL lab, the quest specifically being Errors Unseen. The gloop gun is quite literally just in the UDL lab on Monarch. There is a terminal you have to get into, although it is a 100 level bypass, so you'll have to have quite a bit of levels in that. Or alternatively, if you just go through the rest of the building, there is a key card that will give you access automatically. There's going to be another skill check you will have to pass or a quick survey and if you actually get all the answers right then you will unlock the weapon. And don't forget you could just continuously retry it and it's frankly pretty self-explanatory and pretty funny. The gloop gun's gonna do a couple of things. One of the most notable is it's actually a lobbing gun like a grenade launcher. It'll splash into an area of effect dealing damage to all of those enemies in shock form but also making them all float up into the air. During this they're kind of in a stunned state and it's really funny. Sometimes enemies just float straight up, other times they're going to float across and just kind of look like they're flying very slowly. In addition, this will also apply a weakened passive to whoever is affected by it, and the area of effect here is fairly large. You can shoot this thing pretty far and don't have to be all that accurate to temporarily disable enemies. And this works on pretty much all creatures. Some of the larger ones aren't impacted as much, but you can take out things large or small with the gloop gun. The gloop gun, as you find it, was currently being developed by UDL. It was going to be marketed as a crowd control weapon that would suppress angry mobs and workers. And frankly, it probably would have been pretty effective. Although while a scientist was working on it, a marauder killed him and thus it's kind of just found here and left sitting. All around, this is actually one of the most powerful ones. You just take it out whenever you have a large group of enemies approaching you and then switch back to something else. But it does pretty good damage and of course, just being able to suspend all of your foes in the air is just good. Then we do have the prismatic hammer, and I think this may actually be one of the most viable out of this entire list if you're going for a melee build. The prismatic hammer is just going to be located on Groundbreaker, that big ship you travel to fairly early on. This is another one where you could find the quest from the captain's terminal, then you speak to Gladys and you can buy a Mardet's data pad, which will actually give you the location of the hammer. Near the landing pad of Groundbreaker, as you're running in, you could find this little area with a bunch of bunk beds. If you actually jump up onto the top of those, you could gain access to this back area. There'll be a few enemies to take down and then a door that you'll either have to lockpick your way through or actually have the bypass card for, which is going to be the groundbreaker ones that you can find other ways. And then within, you're actually going to find the prismatic hammer. This one's particularly unique for several different reasons. First and foremost, the main effect of this is it's actually going to switch damage type with each subsequent swing. So you'll deal plasma, then shock, then corrosive, then physical. And obviously this can be quite effective depending on which enemy you are against. And just in general, it's a really cool mechanic. It keeps this one interesting. But even further, if you're actually specking into a melee character, gain some of those additional melee abilities, you could do a lot more with this weapon. At two-handed of 20, you unlock sweep and a power attacks. A power attack with this is actually going to be a ranged ability. It's fairly short range, but it'll release a blast of all of the various energy types in once. And a sweep attack will do the same thing, except it's a melee attack that will release all of the various damage types to multiple enemies enemies if you hit them. And overall, all of that coming together, this is without a doubt one of the most versatile and in turn powerful melee weapons out there. Sometimes it can be bad if you're fighting an enemy and you have a specific damage type that you want to use against him because you'll be consistently switching. But in general, being able to use damage types on the fly like this, getting the short range attack that can hit multiple enemies, and it's a charge attack so you can just do it from sneak and do a ton of damage all at once. This is a really powerful one and it actually has a pretty cool backstory 
story also. So initially, Captain Hawthorne describes how he heard some rumors of some kind of crazy hammer on Groundbreaker. The lead you get from the black market is actually of the Mardet's data pad. It details some arrests of this kind of crazy drunk dude who kept bragging about they'll regret arresting him because he's going to bring out hammer power and how soon he'd be able to show this weapon's chaotic beauty. Although in the end, the reason for this crazy hammer existing, basically Hammersmith was working on a hammer, what would later become the Pulse Hammer, but before they could finish their designs, it was actually stolen by a competing corporation who went to market first. That corporation kept having marketing and ads making fun of Hammersmith not having a hammer in their lineup, so then the executives at Hammersmith decided that they want to create the ultimate hammer, and that's how the prismatic hammer was formed. But it was simply too expensive to bring to market, so it's just a prototype science weapon now. But then last but not least, we have what is without a doubt my favorite science weapon, and one I actually don't see many people talking about, probably because not many people have actually found it, but that is the mind control gun. And before we even talk about this one, just listen to it in action. <laughs> It is absolutely glorious and one of my favorite weapons in this game overall. This I would say is probably the hardest to get access to out of the bunch in this video. It'll be another one that you do encounter on a quest, although it's way more obscure. You probably will do the quest and not even realize you missed it unless you had the quest to get this one also. Like many of the others, you will be able to get a lead to find this one. You'll get it from the Fallbrook Black Market dealer. It's another thing you do have to buy if you want access, or you could just follow this video and you don't have to buy it at all. But you'll encounter this during the sublight quest space crime continuum which you can receive just by talking to the leader of sublight back on groundbreaker basically the location of this weapon is going to be in the secret lab under cascadia cascadia being one of the locations in monarch there's a ton of marauders and enemies all over this so it is actually pretty challenging to even get all the way here and after getting through some terminals you'll find that in one of the buildings within cascadia there's an elevator to the rizzo secret laboratory this is another fully fledged location with a ton of enemies all through throughout it. If you're just following this quest, which is really the way I would recommend doing this one, it'll take you through step by step, otherwise you're going to have to get through some of those terminals on your own. But after you clear through this dungeon and right at the end of the Rizzo lab, you actually will find this little secret entryway that's an old elevator shaft type deal, a mini parkour course. You're going to have to make some jumps here and actually work your way up a couple of ladders. The jumps are really easy, it's nothing to stress over, and if you die here, that is embarrassing. That definitely didn't happen to me on my first try. But at the end of this, next to a dead scientist, you will find the mind control ray. This weapon is a blast to use in game. Basically, what it's going to do is mind control one enemy as long as you do have a concurrent beam on them and it'll basically make them attack the other enemies around them. So typically the other enemies that were previously on their team. Oftentimes, if you just have two large enemies, you can make them fight each other and you could actually shoot the mind control ray really far. So in my eyes, one of the best ways to use this is to sneak around, get the beam off on someone and then you could stand there and have them be pretty far away, dealing damage to all of the surrounding. This of course also will just do passive damage on its own, and it's actually pretty powerful in that regard also. I found myself doing a lot of damage in general to enemies. The higher your science skill while using this one, the better the attack rate and damage will be of the mind controlled enemy while they're mind controlled, so in effect giving them some slight buffs. And overall, this is a lot of fun to use and just mess around with. It's actually really strong because if you're ever in a situation where there's only one, two, or even three enemies, you could basically make them all just fight each other pretty easily. Even if you have to reload, there's this kind of momentary everybody figures out what's going on before they aggro on you again. And if you have the ammo, this is a really effective weapon and without a doubt my favorite of the science weapons. As far as the lore goes, it seems like one of the scientists working at Rizzo developing some of the gas that was making their food so addictive modified that into weapon form in order to actually just literally control people's minds. And in game, it's basically described how to override people's synapses nerves. By the way, that is a comprehensive look at all the science weapons in the Outer Worlds. None of these are honestly all that hard to find. The Mind Control Ray is definitely the most difficult just because there's a genuine challenge of enemies in the area, but a lot of them you could literally just walk up and pick up if you wanted to. There also is this weird dichotomy with some of them like the Mind Control Ray where you almost don't want it to do a lot of damage, like sometimes having a prolonged Mind Control is the fun or the usefulness of it. So even though there are a ton of ways to boost your science damage, 
damage, including a tier 2 perk. Depending on your build, I would almost advise against that. Either way, hopefully you guys found this one informative. I'm going to have a lot of other content coming out around this game over the next few days, so you can get subscribed if you want to see it. But otherwise, I thank you again for watching, and I hope to see you all next time. Later.